Hey everybody, so after I did that rear flasher video the other day, I had a thought and I decided I want to make a more permanent rear light setup uh, using the same flasher unit, uh, same remote switch, but I want um, some lights that I will actually run on the bed rails. Um, using, I ordered some lights, which I'm about to show you, and some Armor Tech uh, bed mount, uh, like ra bed rail mount uh, that you can mount lights on, you can mount antennas on, you can mount all sorts of stuff. It's just, you know, a little adapter that you can run a bolt through. And uh, they sit up about, I ordered this version that sits up about 1.5 inches above the rail. So it should give um, some good rear facing light. But I didn't want anything too big uh, because I tested out the other day. I took that little yellow flashing, uh, the single row light off the flasher, and I uh, soldered two the two six-inch bars, six-inch Chinese bars that I used to have on there. And the flasher can actually run them, but I think it's right is maxing out the amperage or the current that it can actually take. So I don't want to run anything that big, and they're a little bulky anyway. So what I bought in here are two. Uh, 10 watt single LED uh, IP68 rated. Um, they're, I think they're just some Chinese light, like they're a Cree, a Cree LED. But um, they're, they're getting good reviews. They're supposedly very bright. Uh, I got the flood version because I'm not looking for a spotlight behind. I'm going to tint them with a uh, amber film, a little darker than I tinted the other. And um, I think that'll be good. We'll have a useful real light setup. I'm going to show you the entire setup process throughout this video. So let's see what we got in here. Okay, so we've got one kind of generic box. Uh, 10 watt square, 60 degree pack of two. So it is a flood light, 60 degree optics taped up pretty nice. Seems like it's actually pretty well packaged. A lot of people hate on these Chinese lights, and while I do agree that, you know, your Vision X or Baja Designs or Rigid Industries are generally a better choice if you want good warranty, great optics, and, you know, all-around performance, these Chinese lights are really stepping it up. You can still order the bad ones, like, cut this here. you can still order pretty bad ones that will fail on you, but if you do your research, there's a few companies that are making very competitive lights, and you can get, you know, 90% of the output for, you know, a quarter or less of the price, so that's it's very attractive. Yeah, this is really is packaged. Let's just cut this open here. Okay, it's like shrink wrap is Okay, so we got two lights here, two boxes. I'll just open one right now. So foam package. Oh, pretty nice packaging. Not bad. I'm hoping this is stainless hardware. If it's not, I will get some stainless hardware. It looks pretty nice though. Good hardware. And here we go. Here's the little 10 watt. Let's see if we can take it off. Nice. It's a pretty good looking light. And we've got it's like side mounting of some sort. Like some sort of bracket. Anyway, I'll figure that out later. Yeah, we got some bolt holes in there. Alright. So here's the light. You can see uh, you got the flood lens. Um, feels actually pretty solidly built. Like this doesn't feel like a cheap light. It's pretty heavy. I mean time will tell. But first impressions are good. You know, uh, the finish is even pretty good. Not not perfect. There's a few little nicks, but pretty good for being very very cheap. I think I paid like 25 bucks for both of these, and they're like 800 lumens a piece, close to a thousand. Um, pretty nice, right? Sorry guys, kind of dark in here. What I'm gonna do to test these lights is I actually have this uh, ditch bracket light turned off and I unplugged it and I'm just going to touch the leads to the plug to see if these things actually work. Yep. 
Do you see that, guys? Let me see if I can hold it on. There. Nice. That's very bright. That's a really bright light. Those 10 watt LEDs are no joke. Okay, let's do the other one real quick. That one works too. There. Nice. Alright, so let's just uh, figure out what we're doing here. We got our flasher unit, uh, which has two outputs for two lights. And uh, these wires that it has obviously are not long enough because I want to put this flasher unit um, in the cab, in the interior, underneath the dash. I want to run wires out of grommet under the truck um, to the, between the, uh, up between the cab and the bed to the lights. So obviously I need some extensions. So I chopped up one of my extra wiring harnesses from Baja Designs and now we're going to splice it in there. So we've already stripped wire. Careful when stripping, you don't want to damage any strands. Um, let's see if this heat shrink, it's going to be iffy whether that heat shrink is long enough, so I might take another piece here. I'm running out. This piece looks a little longer. So what we're going to do, slip it over beforehand. Don't forget that, because uh, you'll have to recut if you don't put heat shrink over first. Now we're going to splice these two together two positives. First twist the strands, make sure they're nice and tight together. And do a nice like W splice so you get a mechanical connection. A little mechanical strength as well as your solder. And not beautiful, but it'll work. Just a home project. It doesn't need to be up to any sort of industry standards. We're gonna take our soldering iron. Uh, this isn't pinned down at all so Hopefully I can keep it from wiggling around too much. Tin the iron. Get it nice and clean. Uh, apply some heat. Feed some solder in. Solder follows heat, so just flow the solder right over in between the wires. Looks pretty good. Don't go crazy. Don't need too much. It's really hard without a clamp, but it'll work. That's a pretty good bond. We'll do the same thing with the negatives. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some electrical tape. And we're going to insulate each wire individually so it doesn't short when I put the heat shrink on. So just a little electrical tape. Make sure it's really curled up on there. Insulate that wire nice. Push them a little. We're gonna try to slip our heat shrink over. Get a little bit of a squeeze. There we go. We're gonna take a blowtorch. Could use a heat gun. This is the proper way to do it. I'm gonna shrink that right on there. Don't hold it in any one spot or you'll melt. There you go. Nice waterproof bond. Alright, first test on this giant mess of wires. Uh, currently I still have it hooked up to the um, outlet in the truck. I'm going to find a permanent 12 volt power source next, uh, but for right now this is fine to test. The truck is on. Uh, let's fire her up. Sweet. I'm going to start feeding these uh, cables through, starting with the power cable, um, through a grommet. And when you're trying to feed through a grommet, it's something kind of like like a clothes hanger, you know, rigid, long, skinny, <laughs> sexual jokes, um, to tape the end of the wire to and then try to push it through the grommet in a, an open space. That'll make it a lot easier than just trying to f uh, feed a little flimsy wire through. All right, and here's the flasher unit, which is going to go into the dash. And as you can see, I've got uh, light one, light two, and power cable all run through. Um, the grommet, 
can't really see. It's down in there. Got a lot of wires running through the side. But um, unless I start getting like water in the cab or like cold air in the cab, which I didn't last winter, despite it being almost the same amount of stretched, um, I'm not gonna worry about it. Let's run these things. Well, the mounts finally came in for uh, the lights. Um, these are from Armor Tech Off Road. I'm gonna open it up real quick. Let's see if I can it right here. I think it says two. So you can see we've got some uh, holes for bolts that'll go right in the rail. Um, and hardware. Beautiful. Now these are bare metal, so I'm about to go throw some primer on them. And uh, then some Eastwood. Here. So what I'm using, I'm using some PHD engine enamel. Probably overkill, but whatever. And then some extreme chassis black from uh, Eastwood. So I'm gonna go paint those up. All right, guys. So I've been uh, working pretty hard all afternoon. I've got primer and paint on the mounts. That's all we're waiting for. And I have both these lights wired up. They both work. Tested them. They're just laying in the bed right now. I'm gonna get all this extra wire out of here. I put a lot of extra wire on just because. Um, I want to be able to move these things if I have to, like down the rails or whatever. Um, but yeah, so we have two working lights. They flash, they're really bright. They're um, really excited to show you guys, but I'm gonna save the, save the reveal for later. So I'm just gonna wait for that paint to dry, another couple hours, and then I'm gonna stick them on. Should be dark right about then. And uh, I'll come out here and test them out. Hey guys, it's pretty dark out at this point, but as you can see, I've got the mounts all set up. They're nice and painted. Nice and with that Eastwood Extreme Chassis Black. The lights are all mounted up. Haven't hid the wires yet, but I'll do that first thing tomorrow morning. I just wanted to get them all set up. Got the uh, amber film over it. I don't know. If you can see it came out pretty good found something very similar to uh, the size of the lens and just cut out some circles from uh, from some amber headlight film stuck it on there almost no bubbles and I say we fired up so as you saw last time I've got my little remote extend the antenna and there you go guys that is incredible I love it extremely bright from the back And I can turn them on multiple flash patterns. Camera's probably bugging out right now, but not much I can do about it. See if I can get it to refocus here. There we go. No, not really. Probably the best that's going to happen. There you go, and then I can turn them on solid. Which you can't really see, but the fact that I can see the woods at all from this camera lens is uh, really impressive. It's a lot of light. Anyway guys, that's the project from start to finish. Hope you guys like it. I had a lot of fun. Uh, hope you guys learn something maybe about uh, just wiring up some lights or 
or maybe give you an idea of how to put some reverse lights on your Tacoma. I love these mounts, by the way. Armor Tech Off-Road. Beautiful. Anyway, guys, until next time.